Chances are you've never seen one of these before. This is one of those turn of the century medical devices that used the wonders of electricity. And the way it worked is you had these two electrodes down here and you would, you would hold them in your hand or you would rub them against the part that ailed you. Right? You would turn the device on and you would adjust it. And again, it was a very soothing thing to do. Now, my great grandpa owned this and it was just wonderful fun because what you would do is you'd have your brother hold one of the electrodes and then you would walk up behind your neck and you'd rub it against him. Anyway, if you have a chance, you should read the directions for it. See this little thing down here? That's the sponge. And I'm not kidding. It talks in these directions about wetting the sponge for maximum efficiency. Anyway, that's where I started in electronics. Today, I'd like to start our class in industrial electricity. We have in attendance six electrical engineering technology students, two general engineering technology students. Let's see, we have five mechanical, one other, one computer science, and one environmental science students. My name is Aaron Dolan, and it is my pleasure to start this class with you today. To get started, let's shift over here to our basic setup, and we want to go view full screen. There we are. We are going to talk about scientific versus engineering notation. Now, both make it much easier to express both large and small numbers, and both are based on powers of 10. So let's see how they differ. So first we have scientific. Here we could express a number like so, 2.12 times 10 raised to the fifth power. In each number in the front here is a number between 1 and 9. And then we do whatever is necessary when we say 10 raised to whatever power. In engineering notation, that same number would be expressed as 212 times 10 to the 3. Here, that leading number is between 1 and 999, the 10 will always be raised to some power of 3, or some multiple of 3, I should say. And so we make a, a little note of that. So that's a multiple of 3. And I'll show you in a moment, but we're going to use prefixes to make this easier. Let me give you a, an example of why that's important in electronics. So we'll start with a transmitter. So X, M, T, R for transmitter. And over here, we'll have a receiver with a speaker and you listening to it. We know that the transmitter sends a signal through the air and that is picked up by the receiver. Now, a transmitter might have a power of 750,000 watts. The receiver on the other side might only receive 0 0.0000001 watts. And we could talk about uh, the word is attenuation, so this massive power here ends up being a very small signal over here. If we were to use scientific notation, we would express that as 7.5 times 10 to the fifth watts. We would have started with our decimal, decimal point here, and we would have walked over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's 7.5 times 10 to the fifth. Over here on our engineering notation, oh, I'm sorry, for the receiver, we would have said 1 times 10 to the negative 8th watts. Again, same deal. We start here, we walk over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 8. Again, with scientific, that first number 
right? This number right here must be between 1 and 9. Moving to engineering notation. We would express this as 750 times 10 to the third watts. Get my big head out of the way. And on the receiver side, we would have said that is 10 times 10 to the negative 9 watts. You're going to have to remember that this first number here is now between 1 and 999. Using prefixes, we would say this is 750 kilowatts. or simply 750 kW. Over here, we would call this 10 nanowatts, or 10 nW. Now this is built into your calculator if you wanted to explore that. So if we were to enter 750000, there's our number, 750,000. There's a button right here called Engineer. If you push that, it's going to shift it into engineering notation for you. So in this case, we have 750 times 10 to the third. We can do the same thing with the receiver. So 0 0.000000001. Uh, this here, which notation is that? Is that scientific or engineering? Okay, yes, so that's your scientific. And if we push the engineering button, there we go. Now we're in engineering notation. So 10 times 10 to the negative 9, or 10 nanowatts. About these prefixes, they are in your textbook, and they are something that you are going to need to remember. Commit to memory. So what are they? Let's start out at the top here. So 10 to the 12th. Excuse me. 10 to the 12th, we call that Terra, and we use the symbol T. 10 to the 9th is Giga with a G. 10 to the 6th, Mega with an M. You may recognize these when you talk about a computer, for instance. If you had a small uh, thumb drive, if that's something you even use anymore, uh, we would talk about that being 10 or 16 gigabytes. You might have a terabyte hard drive in your machine now. 10 to the third kilo with a small or lowercase k. 10 to the zero is the unit. No prefix for that. And then we go down. So now we have 10 to the negative three is milla with an M, lowercase m. Not to be confused, uppercase is mega, lowercase is milla. 10 to the negative sixth, micro, with a mu, a u that is. Uh, 10 to the negative six, nano, with an n. And 10 to the negative twelfth as pico, with a p. Again, these are all something that you are going to have to memorize, right? So commit to memory. Let's do a few quick examples now. So we'll talk about computer memory. Eight zero 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 bytes. Shifting into engineering notation, eight times 10 to the 9, and using the prefixes, that would be 8 gigabytes. We could talk about a human hair, 0. 0.000075 meters. And shifting that, so we would say 75 times 10 to the negative 6, Let's see if that works out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Remember, that number has to be between 1 and 999. And we have to have a multiple of 3 here. And it looks like we do. 
So we would call that 75 micrometers. And we already talked about the calculator and the fact that it has an engineering button, which will take care of some of that for you. Moving on, moving on to chapter two. We're going to talk about Ohm's law. So Ohm's law. It's one of those fundamental things that you're going to be using in this class pretty much from now till it ends. Ohm's law is a relationship. It is a relationship between voltage and current and resistance. We use the symbols E, I, and R. So voltage E is the electromotive force. So we talk about the electromotive force. E. We talk about current, and that's the current intensity. If we would go back and if we were to put this into French, this would make a little more sense because we would talk about the intensity, I-N-T-E-N-S-I-T-E, -E, of the current. Yes, that's spelled right. And the last one is resistance. Okay, so voltage as voltage with an E, current with an I for intensity, and resistance with an R. And what we're going to do now is we are going to we'll hopefully turn that off. Here we go. We're going to write them this way as E. I, R, and we'll put a circle around them. So E, I, R. And we'll put that over here on the calculator as well. And here's how, again, we said, we said it's a relationship. Okay, it's a relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. It turns out it's a mathematical relationship. And it goes something like this. We would say that the voltage is equal to a current times a resistance. Using the cover-up method, we go over here to the calculator here, we cover that up, we say the voltage, which is the thing we're covering up, is a current multiplied by a resistance. Okay. A current is, well, let's go find out. We cover up the current, and that's a voltage divided by a resistance. So E over R, and finally we look at resistance, so we cover that up, and we say it's a voltage divided by a current. Right. Those are the relationships defined by Ohm's law. Get a new card. Were you in class? At this point, I would have handed out a battery, and I would have given you a LED. So what we have here is a light-emitting diode, and we have a resistor. And what I would have asked you to do is to try to turn on the LED. Okay, there we see it's on. And if we flip the battery around the other way, we would see it's off. So there's a couple of things we notice there. First, the LED has to have the current going in one direction. Or stated another way, we could talk about the polarity of a battery. So this is the positive terminal of the battery. And this is the negative terminal of the battery. Again, the LED only works in one direction. You could think of the battery as a source of energy. Oh, I lost my pen. Can't use my digitizer without my pen. Ah, found it. Okay, where were we? Oh, the battery is a source of energy. The resistor and the LED work as a load. Again, we talked about polarity. 
that the power coming out of the battery has a certain direction in which it is flowing. Schematically, we could draw the circuit like this. So we talk about this part here as the resistor, this part as the light emitting diode, and this as the battery. This particular battery is 9 volts nominal, so we'd write that here, 9 volts. And we could, at this point, write the fact that we have the positive terminal, right? We could put that here if we wanted. It's not necessary because by convention, the fact that these bars have different sizes would indicate what the polarity is. So the top bar being larger automatically means that it's the positive terminal. Current, let's see, current is something that flows. So it is something that flows through the circuit. And one way to think about current is to say we have a wire and we have an observer, an observer who is watching the wire. Now, you could think of this person having a, a stopwatch, right, and what, or uh, clicking every time a electron goes by. If you know how many electrons were going by for some unit of time, you would then know what the current is. Now, the book may or may not mention coulombs per second, but nobody, nobody uses that. Instead, what we talk about is amperes. And so there's a, a current, right? These electrons are moving in that direction, and we would call that amperes or amps. Many authors at this point start making analogies. One of them is a hydraulic analogy. They talk about the battery being like a pump. It pumps water in the circuit. In this case, the water is the electrons. We could talk about the wires being the pipe and the constriction, right? A constriction in the pipe would be like a resistor. In fact, you can look in the textbook to see that analogy. Let's start with a real circuit. We'll put in a power supply. We'll add a switch, we'll put an ammeter in the circuit, then we'll put in a resistive load, and finally we will put in a voltmeter to see what's going on. Now let's label these before we forget what they are. So this is a direct current power supply. This is a switch. This is an amp meter. We established this was a resistor. And finally, with the V, it's a volt meter. Something I'd like you to notice here is the current. Again, we talked about current being a flow. The current in this circuit is actually flowing through the amp meter, but it does not flow through the voltmeter. For instance, if we were to remove the voltmeter from the circuit by lifting up that wire, the circuit would work the same. The resistor would still have the same characteristics as had before. The current meter would still read the same, that is, assuming the switch is closed. Um, this is something that we're going to come across many times in this class, especially when we get to the lab. And, and what I'll constantly remind you is that current flows through an amp meter and voltage is measured across. Let's do a few Ohm's law calculations. Let's start with a circuit of 120 volts. You notice the squiggly line here? That's a sinusoidal source. We'll put in a switch and we'll add a resistor. We'll let this resistor take on the value of 8 ohms, 
there's the omega symbol. That's uh, the units for resistance. Over here, we have 120 volts AC. That's the units. What we want to do is we want to calculate this current. Right? We want to calculate this current. We know that E, I, R, and if we go back to our cover up method, if we're looking for a current, we cover up the current. We know it's a voltage divided by a resistance. So I is equal to E over R. In this case, it's 120 over 8. So our current is 15 amps. We'll do another one just for good measure. This time, we will let the voltage source be 4160 volts AC. We'll add a resistive load. And we'll let the current be 80 amps. And in this particular case, you're asked to figure out what is the resistance. Cover-up method, we're looking for resistance. So we know it's a voltage divided by a current. So R is equal to E over I, which is 4160 over 80, which gives us a current of, correction, which gives us a resistance of 52 ohms. Resistors, I should mention that, that they are real devices. For example, if I get it untwisted, this resistor is a fairly large resistor. I pulled it out of an old exercise bike. And what it did is you would pedal the bike, right? You, you would pedal the bike and you would have to have some kind of mechanical resistance, right? To make it harder to pedal. When you pedaled the bike, you ran a generator. That generator needed to get rid of that electricity. And what it would do is it would send it, it would send that electricity to the resistor and it would be dissipated as heat. So all your pedaling, all that chemical energy, which is you, was converted to mechanical energy, went to the generator, was converted to electrical energy, was sent to the resistor, oh, that's a lot of steps, and it ended up being heat, because that's what resistors do. Resistors take energy and turn it into heat. Well, you could argue those are the same statements. Um, anyway, resistors come in several different sizes and shapes somewhere. Here we go. Here's a smaller resistor. Well, not really. It's actually quite a large resistor. If you can read it, it says 500 ohm. Try the focus here. Let's see if it focuses. Let's try this. Oh dear, my poor camera does not want to focus today. Well, this particular one is a 500 ohm, 25 watt resistor. I have smaller ones. In fact, we can just put them all here. So there's a 25 watt. This here is a half watt. Um, this is a quarter watt. Resistors come in other shapes and sizes as well. So here's kind of an interesting one. This little guy here is a collection of resistors. I believe, well, I don't remember how many are in there, but, um, but there's many resistors inside this little chip. We could find even smaller devices if we wanted. Some resistors are variable. For example, this volume control, right? These resistors, they're variable resistors. And we could go on and on and on. There are literally thousands of different kinds of resistors depending on the application. So the last thing we're gonna do today is we're going to look at resistor color codes so we can figure out what the value of these particular resistors are. So these little guys. So what we'll do is first, I need to shift over to desktop. Let's try a different search. Resistor calculator. Let's see what we get there. There we go. That's what we're looking for. So we want a four band resistor. 
and check this out. So I have this little resistor here, and I can just barely read it. It has a color band of brown. So there's your first color band, brown. Second one is black. Next is green. And the last one is gold. Now this tells me that with this particular color band, that this is a one mega ohm resistor with a 5% tolerance. So let's get our voltmeter out. And we're going to configure it to measure resistance. You'll see the omega symbol right here for resistance. And we have two probes. What we're going to do is we're going to take connect one probe here. I'm going to hold it. And then I'm going to probe with the other one. And we see that the value is 1.0, or awful close, to 1 meg ohm. Now, a quick note, you've got to be careful when you're measuring resistance. Because if you were to put yourself in the circuit, that would throw off the calculations. So you can see that my fingers, as I'm sitting here, have about 12 mega ohms resistance. Let's do another resistor just to see. So this particular resistor has a code of red, 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 and gold. So let's see if it matches. So when I measure it this way, it says 2.18K. There's that K, K ohms. If we go back to the DigiKey website here, and we go red, red, red and gold, we see that that is 2.2K. So it turns out we were a little shy with this particular resistor. Uh, that could be because of my measuring, it could be the resistor itself, or it could be, and most likely, this uh, fluke meter, which is approaching 20 years old. So let's work an example here. And what we want to know is what is the expected value for a resistor with yellow, let's see, yellow, violet, black, and gold. I'll switch back in a moment, but it's 4, 7 times 10 to the 0 is the multiplier, and then this is 5%. So we go back and we look at these color bands, and we see that 4 is yellow, 7, so that's, whoops, wrong color, violet. So that's 47, and this band right here is called the multiplier. And if the multiplier is black, that means we multiply by 1. So it's 47 times one is the resistance for this uh, particular resistor. And then the tolerance says that you can expect any given resistor to be plus or minus 5%. And you'll see there are other tolerance bands in here. And, you know, we get, uh, well, the gold band is pretty common, 5%. They're relatively inexpensive. Silver, I haven't seen silver in a very long time. Uh, these other tolerances, it turns out that closer to the tolerance, the more the resistor costs. Um, I wish I'd have brought it with me. I have a resistor in the lab. It's just a tiny little thing, but it's, it's a $50 part, but it has a tolerance of 0 0.01. Anyway, back once more to the laptop. And so we said that this was 47 times 10 to the 0, which is 47 ohms plus or minus 5%. And if we follow that through, we would say that 47 times 0 0.05, by the way, this particular calculator, you notice how it uh, automatically puts things in fractions? If you want to get rid of that, hit this SD button. Okay, so what this means is we have 47 ohms plus or minus 2.35 ohms. Or stated another way, the resistance will be between these values. Okay, 
Another way of saying that is this is 47 times 0 0.95, and this here is 47 times 1.05. So again, it's 47 plus or minus 5%, which means that if you pick up a random resistor and you calculate the value, it could be between those ranges. As far as the tests and exams are concerned, I will ask you to do the calculations like we've just done here, where you tell me if a resistor is or is not in tolerance. I'm not gonna ask you to remember the colors. Instead, there will be a chart on any quiz or exam. Until next time, be safe.